Uh, Kareem, May if Chuck. Add something to sure. That? I, I always thought it's desirable to have a cooperation between the IA and intelligence organizations. They get their information from different sources. The IA is on the ground, and they have inspectors that can go into the facilities, whereas intelligence, they operate their satellites, and they have their spy systems, they listen to telephones, et cetera. And the IA can have great use of tips from the intelligence organization and go in and say that we'd like to take a look at this or, or that. But one has to be very cautious about in handling this. If the, it has to be mainly a one-way traffic, because if the, if the intelligence agencies think that the IEA will simply work as a prolonged arm, then the IEA will have no confidence in the countries where they are, and they will have no cooperation, whatever. So by, I think it's desirable that, that the US and others have given the IEA information in this case. I think the IEA has to be careful also not to sort of authorize, or legit, not legitimize, but to sanction and say that, yes, this is authentic. The, I remember well when we were in New York and we had information about anthrax in Iraq. And it seemed very likely, with information from Washington in particular, that yes, there was a big supply of anthrax. And yet, there was some of that evidence coming that we could not get uh, support, what were the sources of it. And we held back a little. And it turned out that there was no anthrax in, in Iraq. <laughs> in this case, I think that the uh, IA has been given information. And, and I, I think it's dire, desirable that the information be on the table. But if there are hidden sources, I think I can also see the hesitation of the IEA side simply to say that, yes, we are convinced by what you are saying if you haven't seen the whole thing. So there is a story. There are two, two sides to this story. Jim wants to add something. Um, the amount of <coughs> anthrax <laughs> that Colin Powell uh, mentioned in his uh, speech uh, before the uh, United Nations, uh, the famous one, uh, would, um, in liquid form, have filled up uh, a little more than uh, one tractor trailer. If reduced to powder, such as the anthrax that was used at late 01, early 02 uh, here in the United States, it would have uh, filled up uh, essentially four large suitcases, period. Now, Mr. Blix may know everything about every square inch of Iraq. But I would submit that Iraq is about the size of California. And we, the federal government and the state government, do a pretty good job of controlling California, in a sense, I guess, insofar as anybody can. Uh, and you might want to ask yourselves how many suitcases of cocaine there are in California, hell, in Mendocino County alone, that the authorities don't know about. Just a footnote. Well, the problem is that you, it's very hard to prove, prove the negative. And that was why we never said there are no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We said we had carried out 700 inspections in 500 different sites. And we know the place, perhaps not as well as you know California, but we know Iraq fairly well. We have carried out these 700 inspections. We have not found any trace of it. We were very suspicious about the anthrax, but the anthrax didn't exist. That was why we, why we didn't find it. We didn't say it didn't exist, because you can't do that in any country. Uh, a question I'd like to ask both Bob and Kareem. If China and possibly Russia will not support harsher sanctions, what can the United States and Europe do that will further pressure Iran? Bob, if you'd start with that. I think uh, even without Russia and China, there's, um, that there's much that can be done uh, with a pretty broad coalition of like-minded countries. Uh, there are uh, many countries out there in Europe, uh, in the Gulf region, uh, in uh, East Asia, uh, which are concerned with uh, uh, Iranian behavior. Uh, and I think they would be prepared to pitch in in a variety of ways. And we've, we've explored uh, with them uh, some possibilities for exerting pressure uh, on Iran. Obviously, it's best to have Russia and China on board. Uh, and, to have, uh, and, and to have restrictions uh, put in the form of UN Security Council resolutions because it has a kind of magnifier uh, effect. It legitimizes countries uh, taking action unilaterally or in groups of countries. Uh, but uh, if it, even if we didn't have support by Russia and China, uh, there's a lot can be done. But I think what we've seen, as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, what we've seen in recent months uh, is a willingness of Russia and China to pull together with the other P5 uh, plus one 
partners, and I think we've increased the likelihood uh, of being able to uh, extend, expand uh, what the Security Council has already done. Kareem? I, I would add to that that um, when you talk to people, um, both energy analysts and technocrats within the Iranian system, uh, they will tell you that it's very difficult for Russia and China to single-handedly fill the enormous void left behind by um, European countries um, who do business in Iran. Uh, from uh, vantage point of energy analysts, they say that there's been a whole lot of MOUs, uh, memorandums of understanding, signed between China and Iran. Uh, but very few of them have been carried out, so there's not a whole lot of activity. Um, and from the vantage point of the technocrats, within whether it's the Iranian oil ministry or other ministries, uh, they say they much prefer working with European and certainly American companies uh, than they do uh, Russian and Chinese uh, companies. Now, uh, I, I, I think that, um, as Bob mentioned, uh, ideally you would have them on board, but if not, um, there's other ways, uh, I think, of um, concentrating uh, Iranian minds. I think the uh, financial sanctions which have been uh, pursued um, have been painful for Iran. I think the idea of uh, further divestment campaigns from um, divesting from uh, investing uh, in companies that do a lot of business with Iran uh, will be painful. Um, now, one might argue that uh, this will also be felt by the Iranian people and this will be painful for the Iranian people. I would actually disagree with that because the major uh, uh, contracts which are being signed these days in Iran are being signed by uh, revolutionary guard-led companies and these deals are not really trickling down uh, to the average person. But I would just re-emphasize something I said earlier that um, the focus is so much on sanctions but again a one dollar drop in oil prices is a 900 million dollar loss annual revenue for Iran. So I think that if we focus more on, on, uh, on energy and bringing down oil prices that would be uh, far more debilitating for, for the regime. Thank you. Uh, Hans, a couple of related questions to you. Uh, the Iranian spokesman uh, said recently that Iran doesn't trust France with reprocessing. Is there any substitute that would be more appealing to Tehran? Well, I think the Iranians have their experiences with an invest, tremendous investment in nuclear facilities in, in France at one time, and then they were moved out of that. I don't remember whether they got some compensation for it or not, but they certainly uh, based a, a distrust on France on, on that occasion. I think they also uh, felt that the, the it, attempt they made long ago to get refueling from the United States for the Trigar reactor, which is the research reactor in Tehran, that was called off. They had paid for it. They didn't get the fuel, and I don't think they get the money back either. So that was another example of where they lost their trust for the West. I think the current deal, which Bob Einhorn dealt with so well, is, is an intriguing one. Because if the West were to say no, that uh, we are not willing to help you to get the fuel you need for the trigger reactor, then they will thereby confirm the Iranian contention that, see, we have to enrich ourselves because we can't buy it abroad. So we have to go up to 20% to ourselves, whereas we have said before that it's only for power reactors and we can stay at 4%. And uh, for the Iranians, on the other hand, if they don't want to escalate the conflict that they have now, then actually going above 4% would also be, a, would be exacerbating the situation. Uh, so they, there is a deep-rooted distrust and there are some good reasons for it as well. <laughs> 